modest goal is going to be that we're going to customize scheduling <coughs> for uh, multi-rate image processing applications. And so this is a subdomain with important applications where scheduling can be done more efficiently and where code generation and reuse buffer synthesis are a lot easier. So just to clarify what a multi-rate image processing application is or a multi-rate image processing algorithm is, basically you have, uh, it's an algorithm that's built out of sliding window operations. So it's a directed acyclic graph of sliding window ops where a sliding window operation uh, takes in an input image like the one shown here. And it has some fixed size kernel, like say a three by three blur or maybe some sort of a pointwise operation that, uh, so it basically takes a you know, fixed size windows of the input image and applies a function to those windows to produce output pixels in the output image. And once that's done, um, you step over by some fixed stride. So in this case, the stride is one. So this would be a stencil um, and you apply the same function again. So for example, in the uh, program that I showed at the beginning of this presentation, there's uh, two sliding window operations, a pointwise operation that uses a one by one window followed by the blur, which is a uh, pointwise operation with uh, also strides of one that has a two by two, or, or excuse me, a stride of two that has um, a two by two window. So we had a pointwise operation, a one by one window with a stride of one in uh, the X and Y, and then a two by two operation, uh, two by two window operation with a stride of two in X and Y. And a lot of different applications uh, like edge detection, exposure fusion, demosaicing, uh, image blending can be implemented this way. So it's a pretty big class of uh, image processing apps. And here are just uh, 1D examples of what code for each loop looks like. So it's pretty similar. You have you know, a for loop and you assign to the output. And each of these operations is going to, you know, the stencil, the upsample, and the downsample, which are the three categories, are going to take in uh, two by one windows. And the difference between them is uh, what distinguishes a stencil, an upsample, and a downsample is the stride at which the operation is applied. So the stride of a stencil is one. So all the axes are one times the loop index variable. In an upsample, the stride is less than one, so it's a fraction, meaning that you uh, apply the window to the same, or you apply the function to the same window multiple times. So, uh, you know, here the stride is divided by two, or is one half, or floor of the uh, value divided by two. And then in a downsample, um, the stride is larger than one, so you're basically skipping some windows when you produce the output. And our compiler has three different phases, unrolling, fusion, and reuse buffer optimization. And I've compressed unrolling and fusion into a single phase here. So we're going to take in our program and our throughput target. We're going to basically duplicate statements in the program to reach the throughput target and fuse the two different uh, unrolled loops into a single loop with better locality. And then we're going to put it through a reuse buffer optimization that figures out how to um, convert memories in the program into streams or shift registers or line buffers. Uh, and that's going to apply pipeline pragmas and do some other minor uh, hardware specific steps. And then that output is going to be sent to an HLS tool. And it's also just worth noting that in multi read applications, even deciding um, how much you need to unroll each loop nest to reach a throughput target is not a completely trivial problem. So for example, in uh, you know if every single um, stage in your application is a stencil, so it's uh, a so-called unirate application, then unrolling to reach a throughput target is trivial. If you want two pixels per clock cycle, you just unroll every stage by two. Um, but when you have multi-rate applications, you can have differences in utilization across the different stages, which mean that you need to unroll some stages more than others. So for example, to accept two pixels every clock cycle, uh, this input pointwise operation that multiplies every input by two needs to be duplicated. It needs to be unrolled by two because it's gotta be able to process two pixels per clock cycle. But the downsample is actually only applied or only used about 25% of the time at one pixel per clock cycle. So to go to two pixels per clock cycle, you actually don't need to duplicate that statement because even at two pixels per clock, it's still underutilized. So I just point that out to say that uh, even something like deciding on the unrolling factor is not completely trivial in this case. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on unrolling and fusion. And so here's uh, those two stages broken out. So first we do unrolling and that doesn't actually change the second stage, but it does change the first one. And then we fuse them together into a higher locality loop nest. And actually I want to really just zero in on loop fusion because the analysis that we do to determine unrolling factors is almost exactly the same as the analysis that uh, does loop fusion. So let's just forget about uh, loop unrolling for a second. And actually also let's forget about the throughput target since we're forgetting about loop unrolling. And to make the analysis even easier, let's uh, first just simplify this loop nest uh, and pretend that we're in 1D and that the loop bounds are a lot smaller so that we can draw out the exact trace of events in this uh, tiny program. And then we'll generalize back to the uh, two-dimensional case with realistic bounds because the bounds don't really matter and two dimensions actually are not super important either. 
So basically the challenge that we have is that we are given a program which has the schedule shown on the left where the first loop runs to completion and then the second loop starts, which um, amounts to a schedule like this one where time goes from top to bottom, uh, you know, earliest to latest. And we produce every single value uh, of this statement P from zero to five, and then we produce every single value um, in the consumer loop nest from zero to three, or from zero to two inclusive. And what we want is the schedule on the right where we have some unknown fused loop nest where both statements have been pushed into a single loop nest with new bounds and conditions that govern when the uh, statements execute. And we've got a trace like the one shown on the far right where again, time goes from early on the top to late on the bottom. And uh, every single value in the consumer loop nest uh, is produced as soon as its uh, data dependencies have been completed. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about how we actually convert uh, the scheduling problem into a constraint solving problem that's more tractable than the default formulation that you would see in a polyhedral analysis tool.